Um, so what come to our next lesson on vector spaces and um, this is a very crucial aspect of it and we are supposed to go through that okay so subspaces um, if you have a vector space you know V and we can take some subset of it okay remember the vector space V is defined as a set and it's coming with some particular set of operations and we have some axioms that when those um, set of the elements in the vector space or the set you are calling a vector space um, if they satisfy some particular axioms then that set becomes a vector space right and if you can pick a subset of the vector space and that subset is also a vector space of itself then that subset is called a vector a, a subspace okay so that's the basic definition I have here subset W of a vector space V over a field F it's called a subspace of V if W itself is a vector space over F and the same addition and scalar multiplication from V. So in more generally, if, if you want to verify that a particular given subset of a vector space is actually a subspace, then what you can say is that if you have your V to be a vector space over a field, uh, then a subset W in V is a subspace. Even only if the following holds okay um, if one the zero vector or the in that particular vector space you are dealing with the zero vector belongs to that subset and then if you pick any two elements in the subset and you sum them you find your result in that same subset okay and also if you multiply any vector in the subset um, by a scalar that is the scalar is from this field then you can say that if it belongs to the vectors, um, the subset, then that set W is a subspace. So one, the zero vector should be in the subset. Any two elements you pick from the subset, when you sum them, their product or their result should be in the subset. And, though, and so if you pick any other element or any other vector in the subset W and multiply that by a constant in this case, and the result you get is still in the subset w then w is a subspace i hope that makes sense okay now let's go to some examples so for any given vector space v or field we have something we call a trivial subspaces and we say that the set that contains only the zero vector is a subspace of v why so here in this case w is actually the set zero the set with only the zero vector and you are saying that this is a vector space uh, a subspace sorry why because one the zero vector should be in rw and in this case that's the only element so we don't have to show that okay the second part is if i pick any two elements that belong to this vector space and the only element that belongs to that is zero so i can pick zero vector two times and when i add it is equal to zero right and it belongs to the subset w we are talking about and the last part is that um sorry the last part c is that um if i pick any scalar say k and multiply that by an element in this vector space or this subset which is equal to zero it should belong to the subset w and this really happens it makes sense right so the zero subset of a vector space is actually a trivial subspace of v and that the v itself is a trivial subset of itself i mean we can say that any set is a subset of itself and this that's the idea we are using here now on the other hand if you want to show this indeed for you to say that something is a vector space zero vector should be part of it if you remember the axioms we or the axioms we we studied for the vector space in our previous lesson we said that zero is part of the vector space and if i pick it before v can be a vector space any y or any vector x that belong to them if i add them i should have the product to be in v so these are using basic um, axioms or basic properties of a vector space and we said that if you have um, a scalar k from the field and you multiply it by a vector in the vector space or the set it should belong to that so these are just assume assumes from the um, vector space definition so indeed these becomes vector spaces and they are trivial because they come by definitions okay 
Now let's look at more intense examples. So for V being equal to a square matrix M n by n matrices over a field F, and here n is greater than or equal to 2, let W1 be the set of all diagonal matrices, okay, that belongs to V. Is W1 a subspace? What is a diagonal matrix in any case? A diagonal matrix, say, maybe if I pick a matrix A, is diagonal if here you have a non-zero or some elements here. So let me say it this way. The diagonal entries have some elements all the way to A and N, and then everything just above it and below the diagonal, everything you have there is zero, okay? So let me pick, this is a more general form. Let me pick maybe a two by two, because N can be two. It can be more than two. So maybe, let me pick A to be equal to maybe, um, or maybe three by three matrix. That can be maybe one, zero, 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 two, zero, 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 four. Okay, this is a diagonal matrix because it has elements in the diagonal and just above and below the diagonal, we have zeros there. So the, defin the main definition for diagonal matrix is that it has zeros just above and below the diagonal. That is the main definition. We don't care whatever we have in the diagonal, okay? So the first thing is, one is the zero matrix in this, because in this, in the matrix, the zero vector will be the zero matrix. Let's see how the zero matrix looks like. The zero matrix, which I'm going to call is big O, is more like is that zero, 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 all the way to the dimension you're looking at. Because N here can be any dimension, okay? So we have zeros everywhere, okay? All the way to the point we get to our N. If you're looking at three by three matrix, the zero matrix for three by three matrix can be um, zero, 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 and that. The main definition for a diagonal matrix is just above and below the diagonal. That is, above the diagonal we have here, we have zeros there. Below the diagonal, we have zeros there. So the zero matrix is actually a diagonal matrix, right? So one, this zero matrix belongs to W1, right? So that's the first point. The second point is if I pick any two diagonal matrices and I sum them, what happens? I mean, for representation sake or for this lesson sake, let's pick a B to be um, the matrix negative two, a three by three matrix. You can actually generalize this to any n by n matrix, okay? But I'm doing this because I want you to understand it better, okay? Zero, zero, and three. And then if I add it to the A we have above there, this is A and this is B. You're gonna get, when you sum them, you're gonna have um, negative one, I'm sure, maybe. Um, or maybe, let me pick three here, right? Negative three here, so I'm gonna have negative two, zero, Actually, you can actually pick the negative two there, but I don't really care. Um, and zero, two plus two is four, zero, 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 and then three plus um, four is seven, right? So I'm summing them entry-wise. If you watch some of my videos on matrix addition, you sum them, the first entry plus the first entry, second plus second, third plus third. And then you go like that, okay? And if you look at this in a more general form, if you have an A of this form and then a B of this form, actually, maybe, um, sorry, maybe you have some B11, some elements here and some big zero, big zero, including determining that you have zeros everywhere, B and N, and you sum them. The general form, maybe A, N, and B, N, let me call them that way. An plus Bn in this form will actually give you a diagonal matrix. It's going to have A11 plus B11, and then big zero here, big zero here, and then A22 plus B22, all the way you sum to Ann plus Bnn. Okay, so you're going to have um, another diagonal matrix. So when you sum them, you have a diagonal matrix, and that's the definition for W1. Because W1 is all the, the, the set, set of all diagonal matrices, okay? And then on the other hand, the last one that we need to confirm is um, if you have a scalar multiple of any matrix, okay? And if you multiply the general form of it, you're going to have KA11, 
k times zero will be zero all the way zero here zero here k a two two and the dot all the way to um k n k a n n okay everything that you have just above and below the diagonal will be zero and so yes this also give you a diagonal matrix okay like i said you can actually pick some small examples to look at how it comes about okay and this is going to give you a diagonal matrix so yes um sorry yes w1 is a subspace okay now you can go to the second one if you have w2 being um the square matrix side that the determinant of the matrix a is zero so if you have w2 is all the set of matrices a such that the determinant of the matrix is zero and they belong to rv that we defined earlier remember this is v that all n n by n matrix square matrix okay with n greater than or equal to two now to prove this you could actually prove it in a gen more general form but let me pick some example um if i pick an a which is equal to one 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 what is the determinant here um if you watch my videos on determinant you realize that this is this time is that that is one times one which is one minus this guy the product of them so you get one minus one which is zero if i pick so a belong to this set because w2 is all the set of matrices n by n matrices and n k can be greater than or equal to two so you can pick a two by two matrix for more precise or simple way um one negative one negative one one okay and the determinant of this b is actually equal to the same thing one times one which is one minus negative one times negative one is going to give you one so that gives you zero as well so indeed b and a are part of the set w2 okay now let's look at a plus b and see what happens when you sum them you're going to have two zero zero two and what is the determinant of a plus b it is equal to the determinant of a plus b that we had here is equal to two times two which is four minus zero and that is four and this is not zero right so this is not zero it means that it's violating this whole thing the determinant of this a plus b is supposed to be um a plus b is supposed to be part of w2 is when a and b are part of w2 because that's the definition of a subspace if you have two elements that are part of the subspace then the sum or your sum should belong to the subspace as well but here the sum gave us indeed a two by two matrix but the determinant is not zero so it's not part of so a plus b does not belong to w2 so here based on this example we can just conclude and this is approved by um counter example this is a proof one of the examples that you can use counter example to prove that something is something is not true okay or you can in a more general form you can say that this is not true because the determinant of a plus b is not equal to the determinant of a plus determinant of b and that this is a property we know um i wrote some basic proof for properties of determinants so you can actually check those videos out and once you're able to say this then since this is not equal to that then it shows that indeed if you have a plus b a plus b will not belong to the set w2 because a plus b can have a determinant which is not zero okay all right so that is it by this so this no w2 is not a subspace of this v okay now let's go to c is w3 is equal to a belonging to the square matrix m by n or sorry capital m and by n right so that a trace of a is zero and this um this is true you can actually use um examples to show that this is true but something that you want to show is true you're going to show it for a general case so the first point is that we want to make sure that um i've said it's true right so we want to make sure that the zero vector matrix is part of this okay what is the zero matrix is the matrix that has zeros everywhere okay so let me just call it this way zeros at a i j levels and then the trace of this um zero matrix is the sum of all the diagonal entries okay and the zero matrix has zeros everywhere so all the diagonal entries are zero so the sum will be give you zero right so the zero matrix actually belong to 
the w3 right the zero matrix in it so you're done with that first part um actually i'm using one and two yeah two if i have two matrices say a defined in this small aij and so this was one of the general representation of matrices that i wrote when we're dealing with matrices okay and then the reason is i want to write some basic um, proof for that and then b being equal to some small b i j's okay let them belong to um the w3 so we let a b okay assuming that we know that a and b belong to w3 can we show that the sum a plus b also belong to w3 what we mean by belonging to w3 is that we know since they belong to w3 the trace of a is zero and that is equal to the sum as i start from one to n a i i that is the diagonal entries and then the trace of b is equal to the sum as i start from one to n b i i and this trace is also zero because they belong to w3 okay now i want to show that when we sum them the product we get the final answer we get when we sum yeah, the trace of that final answer will also be zero. That's what I want to show, okay? Now, what is A plus B? A plus B here, in terms of matrix representation, will be um, AIJ plus BIJ. And then I can add these two and say this is AIJ plus BIJ. And I'm going to add them based on entry wise, okay? And in that case, we can write it as, um, you can leave it this way, or if you want a more precise, a more concise way, you can write it A plus B, I, J. Okay. Um, you can leave it this way or that way, because I'm just summing them. Okay. And we sum them based on the position. If I and J, so I can sum A, 1, 2, and then B, 1, 2 together. I can sum A, 1, 2, and then B, 2, 1. Okay. So. That's what I mean. That's why I, I just did it this way so that we know, okay, we summon them at the exact positions, okay? Now, the trace of this guy, A plus B, will be equal to the sum as I starting from 1 to N, then A plus B, I, I, okay? And this can be expanded into this form, A, I, I plus B, I, I. And this, from a property of summation, you can write this as n a i i plus summation. I start from one to n b i i. And what is this sum? This sum is a trace of a, and that gave us zero. And this sum is a trace of b that gave us zero. So indeed, if you sum two things, the trace of the two matrices you sum will also be zero. So that also belongs to W three. And the last part that we are supposed to show is that if you have um, a scalar multiple of any matrix, say A, that belong to the W3, AIJ, this can be written as um, KAIJ. And the trace, what is the trace of this? KAIJ or KA is the sum as I start from 1 to N, KAII. And this, for summation, since K is constant, I can pull it out. I'm going to have this um, I starting from 1 to N, A, I, I. And this sum is a trace of A, and that gave us 0. So I have K into 0, and that is 0 that belongs to. So it means that K, A belongs to W3. And this satisfies all the properties that we are supposed to, or this, uh, all the um, things that we are supposed to show for a subspace. So this W3 is actually a subspace. So yes. W3 is a subspace of V. Now let's look at the last, um, the, I mean, the third example. So for V being a polynomial N, it's like that N is bigger than or equal to 1. Let W1 be equal to Pn. And it's all the functions F, or all the polynomial F, it's like that um, the degree of F is less than or equal to n. So the first thing is, um, the first part is the zero polynomial, zero degree 
polynomial i have to make sure that the zero vector belongs here but in terms of polynomial the zero degree polynomial will be the zero vector in in quotes that's what we're looking at okay the zero degree polynomial here is a constant so f can be just any constant a in the field okay and so supposing that the variable you are dealing with here is t so let t be our variable okay so the polynomial is defined in terms of t squared t2 maybe um a t2 t squared plus b t cubed plus so that's what i mean by this variable okay and in this case since we are looking at a zero degree polynomial it means a constant is there but the degree of the polynomial t is zero right the, the variable t here is zero so we have a t to the zero which is just one so i'm going to have a what is the degree of this the degree of this here the degree here of f here is equal to zero which is less than or equal to uh which is less than our n because n is bigger than or equal to one right that's what we are saying so the zero degree polynomial actually belongs to w1 because w1 is saying that it's all the set of the degrees um the, the polynomial side that the degree of the polynomial is less than or equal to n so if i pick n to be maybe any number at all then the zero degree polynomial actually belongs to that because the zero degree degree polynomial has a degree of zero which is less than n and it satisfies this condition for w1 now on the other hand the second part is if i have two polynomials so the first criteria is if i have f and g belonging to w1 then f plus g depend on their degree okay so the degree of this guy can be either less than or equal to n why am i saying this it will be equal to n if one of them or both of them have degrees n and it will be less than n if both of them are having degrees less than n right so i mean indeed this is true the third one is if i have um f belonging to w1 then any constant k times f the degree of that is also less than or equal to n because the degree of a polynomial is determined by the polynomial not a constant right so when i multiply k by the polynomial f it doesn't change the degree of the constant um, the degree of the polynomial f okay so indeed yes this w1 is a subspace of v on the other hand let this be that and in this w2 we are looking for polynomial such that the degree of the polynomial is equal to n on the first part let's look at the um the zero degree polynomial the zero, zero degree polynomial okay zero degree polynomial is any polynomial polynomial of the form a constant the degree here of f is equal to zero which is not equal to n because it's supposed to be equal to n that is the main thing here so here the zero degree polynomial is not part of w2 so because of just this one you can say um w2 you can actually use this to conclude w2 is not a subspace on the other hand you can use other the other second part that says that if i have um two degrees maybe if f and g belong to they both have degrees n right and they belong to w2 and maybe f is defined in such a way that you have some constant a naught plus all the way to maybe some a n t to the n so the degree here is n and g is also defined as b naught plus all the way to the same constant here but it's negative a n t to the n if i sum this to f plus g I'm going to have some a naught plus b naught, right? Plus all the way to. When I sum these two, they are going to give me zero. So I'm going to have uh, maybe a n minus one t n minus one plus b n minus one t n minus one. And a degree here, the degree here that we have f plus g is equal to n minus one, which is less than n, and it does not belong to um out of you two with this specific example okay so you can come up with different different arguments to say that oh this is not true because 
um, it has not really worked for for me or something. So you can actually come with a counter example where your degree of polynomial is two, maybe a second degree polynomial. You can call f to be maybe um, maybe one plus two t minus t squared, and maybe g to be equal to maybe one. So here your n is equal to two. That's what I'm looking at. One minus two t or maybe plus two t plus t squared. These two are different polynomials because this part and this part are different. But if I sum these two, that's what I was doing here. I'm going to have two, that's two, one plus one, which is two plus four t. And the degree here, the degree here is what? One, which is less than two because n is two. And it does not belong to w2. So here, um, w2 is not a subspace. The last one that I'm going to talk about here, um, I know this is going to be, this has been long because I just want you to understand how the basis of uh, what we call subspaces, okay? So, first you look at the zero vector here is this guy. It belongs to R3 and here it belongs to W because it has some values A at B and then the last part being zero, okay? So the zero vector actually belongs to W. Now on the other hand, um, if I look at, so that is the first part. Oh, sorry. If I look at, say a vector X being equal to A, B, zero, uh, maybe, yeah. The vector Y being equal to maybe A1, so let me call this a1, b1. So a2, b2, 0. Then x plus y is equal to a1 plus b a2, a2, or b1, sorry. b1 plus b2, and then 0 plus 0 will give me 0, right? So this is actually a vector with some element here and some element here, and this is 0. So that belongs to w. Third part is, um, if I have a constant, say k times this x that I've picked here, is going to be um, k a1, k a2, or k b1, and then k times 0 is 0, right? So that belongs to w. So this is also a subspace, okay? So I hope these different kind of examples actually um, contribute to your understanding of subspaces. I mean, in the next lessons, we're going to talk about a lot in this subspace um, vector spaces uh, maybe you're going to start writing some proofs or uh, some other things i mean the intersection of subspaces of vector space v is a subspace why and those things so those are the things we would we want to go through them okay so stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed yet see you next time